What's going on guys? This weekend has been a crazy one all around the world with the protests and the rioting. So I figure why not try to take a step away from reality and step back into the game that we all love. And hopefully with the announcement of layers being re-added to the two most popular servers and the increase in Black Lotus spawns with that hotfix, we will be seeing an announce of AQ and Phase 5 this week or next week. It might honestly happen the day that this video is released, so just be ready for that. With that said, that means we have some things to do right now to prepare for this launch. And today I'm going to give you the top five things to do if you are a rogue. It can also be useful if you are a hunter or a warrior for a lot of these things, but this is going to be my top five things to do right now to start preparing for the AQ40 release as well as the Phase 5 launch. As usual, if you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe, join the Discord channel, and come hang out with us on Twitch. Let's do this. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually kind of like my bonus tip. It's actually not going to be the first one, so it's kind of like the bonus tip. And this is going to be to figure out your gear prio for the next phase and the next raid, of course. A big thing here is deciding as a rogue if you're going to be daggers or swords. If you're going daggers, you want to look at the very biggest items in the game to be upgrades and those are going to be both weapons daggers or swords but the item death sting off of C'Thun is just leagues and leagues above anything else you can get in the game at this time it is by far your biggest dps increase in this entire phase so you want to try to figure out a way within your guild if it's dkp or if it's loot council or anything like that prio list you want to make sure that this is your number one priority item and I did make a guide for rogues to pay attention to their new phase five bis and to go over exactly which items they want in which priority order. So you can check that out as well. The number one, the first thing you want to do right now, and you should have already been started doing this earlier, is to farm all of the gear and items you need for phase five launch. And this also pertains to things that might be moving. So a very important one is Hodge. Hand of Justice, if you don't have this already as a new rogue or you're an alt or you just have never decided to farm it, you can actually solo farm it on Anger Forge. And the reason you want to do this right now while it's still on Anger Forge is that with Phase 5, it's speculated that Hodge will be moving to Emperor. So this means you'll have to kill the last boss in the BRD dungeon to get your Hand of Justice. When it does swap to Emperor, the drop rate does increase, but it still is pretty rough to farm. So if you want to learn how to solo farm Hodge, in the Discord I actually am posting a sub-only video of exactly how to solo farm Hodge. I just did it this week. It took me 74 kills on my brand new Rogue and it's pretty easy for anyone to do. You can do it and almost zone out. It's, it's super simple. Hodge is a pretty important item and it has been so far in World of Warcraft Classic, but you could have also skipped it because you could be rocking DFT and this week you got your Renataki's Charm of Trickery, which will be your Biss Trinket moving forward until in Phase 5, Drom Gabber. And I'll do a guide going over literally every single trinket and how to use them and in what situations you're going to use them and pretty much ranking all of those. I've been talking about that on stream quite often lately, so I'm going to do a guide on that as well. The next thing you want to do is get all of the other gear you need. And the biggest thing to think about is the Shadowcraft set. And you need the Shadowcraft set to make your Dark Mantle, the tier 0.5, which is going to be your new BIS gear moving forward until you're in pretty much full BIS gear from Phase 5. So I made a guide on exactly how good it is and also a guide on exactly what you need to do to get this gear. And it's decently expensive. It's gonna cost you probably over a thousand gold to get it all. And that's from not even buying the BOE pieces. So just go farm that right away. That is the first thing you wanna do to prepare for next phase. Second thing you wanna do is gonna stay with gear and that's gonna be to farm your nature res gear. Now this is going to be dependent pretty much specifically on how fast your guild can kill different bosses in the dungeon. 
The ones that matter are Princess Huhuran and Visidus. Visidus is the optional boss, and for this boss, you're actually gonna want to farm also some frost damage weapons, and that's like Cold Rage Dagger, or Hammer of the North Wind and the AV dagger, and I also made a guide on how to get all of your nature res gear, so you can check that out as well in the description. But the next thing you want to do is start getting your nature res gear. And it's really important kind of to do this early. The price of nature res rings has shot up already on all servers, and on my server it's like 600 to 800 gold for some. So just make sure that if you ever see a cheap nature res ring, I actually I saw one like two days ago for 40 gold, so I just swiped that. If you see any of that, you do want to get it. Any of your BOE nature res gear is going to be pretty expensive right now, but there's a lot of it that you can solo farm and you absolutely want to have this ready for launch so that you can get into AQ and if you wipe and lose world buffs, you're not going to be hard stuck on Princess. Tip number three is pretty much the same thing that happens before every phase and that is to farm all of your consumables. The prices of consumables are going to skyrocket on launch and you want to be ready to be able to focus on more important things like getting your dark mantle set instead of having to save up money and get ready to buy your consumables. So farm your consumables. You can also actually do a lot of investment because phase launches are some of the best time, always like the best time to, to invest in the best items that you need or things that people will need and you can make a ton of money. So it's a great time to make money at the beginning of a phase. And it's also a rough time if you didn't pay attention because you can end up spending a lot of money on things you should have just gotten earlier. So with that, I will mention you're gonna want every single type of resistance potion. You're gonna want a lot of nature as pots. You're, this is progression, guys. Expect a lot of wipes unless you're in one of the best guilds or like private server guild. You're still gonna see a lot of wipes for most people. So you're gonna want to have a decent amount of nature res pots, probably 20 per week. Because if you wanna clear this smoothly, a lot of times you will actually wanna spam use these uh, off of CD on some fights. Number four. Number four is one that it's more for someone who's like trying hard, but everyone should really do this. And that is mainly to learn the strategies. AQ introduces actual mechanics to the game. I would say BWL and MC are a lot easier of dungeons and raids. You're gonna wanna learn all of the strats for everything within the dungeon. And I'm sure on YouTube, I haven't really looked, but I'm sure on YouTube there's a lot of guides out there for how to do strats on everything. Hopefully, if you are in a tryhard guild or a private server guild, you've already done AQ on private servers or the PTR will hopefully release allowing us to test out AQ. I do know that a lot of private server guilds or people running for the world first of BWL were actually downloading private server clients again and launching BWL on their own clients just to practice for the raid. So if your guild is going for your server first, a world first, or just even pumping or like really trying to clear this dungeon fast on the first day of the launch, then you probably should all know every single strat. Then that pertains to all of the bosses, all of your positioning. So that's a lot with like Cthulhu positioning. You should have that all mapped out. You're gonna need to have your Warlock tank geared out. You're gonna need some of your melee, 15 melee and hunters probably to have nature res gear for Huron in case you wipe and lose world buffs and need to clear that boss slower. And then from there, it's like you actually even need to know strats on all of the trash pulls. So the, this one's actually kind of massive. It's, it's obvious, but it's really important. You really do need to know all of the strategies of the raid before going into the raid. And possibly it would be helpful for your guilds to practice the raid itself. And you do want to know all of the mechanics of every single boss. Sorry for ranting on that one for a little bit. It's definitely a little bit obvious, but you absolutely should be paying attention to that. And it's, it's very important. The fifth and final thing that you want to be doing right now to prepare for the AQ launch is going to be getting your Scenarian Circle rep. And the reason you want to do this is specifically for the trinket from Exalted. You can get your rep from the AQ20 instance. You get about 3000 rep per instance, so that's going to take you quite a while to get Exalted through that. But you do want to have your Exalted trinket and that is Earthstrike. It actually won't beat out Renataki's Trinket in any of your shorter fights, 
Even a fight that's like a minute and a half long, Renataki's Trinket will actually still outperform the Earth Strike. Now the biggest reason to want to get this Trinket, even if it's not outperforming Renataki's right now, is that you are going to be getting the 4-piece Dark Mantle set, and as you get gear from the AQ Raid, you're going to possibly end up breaking up your 2-piece ZG set. And that is a really huge set bonus. It's 20 attack power just from the two pieces, and it's just from the shoulders and obviously the trinket. So if you're gonna end up breaking that up, the trinket becomes slightly less powerful, and especially if you're swords. It's still very strong if you're daggers, and it's still very strong if you're swords, but it's slightly less powerful. So you do want to get your Earth Strike trinket because you might be swapping that out depending on how long your fights are. And in AQ, your first few weeks, you're probably going to have decently long fights. Now, hunters and warriors can also go after this trinket, so that's fine. But if you're a caster, you might want to get to Revere to get the bracers from there. And those are actually insane bracers. Check them out. As people realize they're going to start needing to get rep, you're going to see Silithus get more and more swarmed. And right as they actually launch the phase five launch, there's going to be so many people out there farming either rep or farming for the Scarab Lord mount, and this is just going to be wild. The world PvP is going to be insane, it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be really hard to farm your rep, it's not going to be a friendly zone at all. Even if there's still layers, we're going to see both layers filled in Silithus, because you also get new quests as well. So try to get a jump start on farming your Scenarian Circle rep. This is the last thing to do and I put it as number 5 because it is decently less important because you did this week get your Renataki's Trinket, but it is still a big increase. And you're going to be running AQ20 anyways, you need to get Backstab Book. And there it is guys, this is your top 5 things you need to do right now as a rogue to prepare for the launch of AQ and Phase 5. There are a lot of really good guides out there. Willy actually made a two-part guide that has a lot of other things more in detail about what you're going to want to farm right now or what you're going to want to do outside of just the specifics of a rogue. But I wanted to bring you the things you need to do right now, specifically if you're a rogue. And if you're not on top of some of these things, you are going to fall behind. It doesn't matter if you're a min-maxer or if you want to play at a decently competitive level or you just are always trying to improve, you want to make sure that you take these steps before the launch because it is very, very important. Once again guys, feel free to join the Discord channel, the link is in the description, and in there there's a lot of exclusive content as well as a lot of theory crafting that we do and a lot of just conversations and hanging out. I do log reviews, VOD reviews, all of that stuff, just check out the Discord channel. That being said, if you like this sort of content, just make sure to like and subscribe or check me out on Twitch. We just started doing splits, so that's going to be interesting pushing numbers with a significantly weaker raid every week, except for the speedrun week. So it'll be really fun, but also interesting as well. As always, good luck out there and I'll catch you on the next one.